Hello friends! Welcome to Dotting with Diamonds. My name is Em and welcome back to another whip and chat here on the channel. Now, if you're new here and you don't know what a whip and chat is, whip and chat stands for work in progress and chat, um, which means I'm working on a craft or a diamond painting or whatever it is I am working on. We are just sitting, working on our crafts and chatting. Um, if you like, you can grab whatever it is you're working on and work alongside me, or you can continue to do your whatever it is you're doing. But we're just chit-chatting today and talking a little bit about what's going on right now. Um, I am continuing my progress on the old shoe house. Yay! We are more than halfway done at this point with this canvas. I am working on this canvas for two uh, diamond painting events right now. If you don't know what an event is, a diamond painting event is just a way the community can get together and share our progress posts. A lot of these events happen on Instagram or Facebook. These two events happen to be on Instagram where I'm most active. You can actually find me in the description. Um, I post all my progress over there, some other fun stuff. There's actually a few unboxings over there. Um, so yeah, um, how are you all doing today? It was a very, very warm day today and I spent it inside. <laughs> You're also kind of at a weird angle um, and that's because I flipped this canvas around. So now I'm working on it um, the other way and I have part of the canvas draped off the side of my table. Um, so you might hear the rustling of the cover sheet, and I apologize for that if it gets annoying. I'm going to try my best not to move around too much. Also, you might hear the fan kick on at some point. It likes to make this beautiful rattling noise. So if you start healing, he healing, if you start hearing a rattling noise, it's the fan. I'm sorry about it. Um, so old shoe house, I have my containers here using just a boring regular tray today because I'm using Kit, Kit Kat. Y'all, I can't talk. I'm using the Tic Tac containers and I don't have a fun tray with a spout. So this is what I got to use to get the drills back in there. Otherwise the drills go flying. But I am using my Diamond Pen Pal newest pen. I believe I used this in the last whip and chat. And I've got a new addition. I've got a steel multi-placer, which I am loving. I love the steel multi-placer. It doesn't exactly fit, though, in <laughs> inside the pen. I don't know why, but it works. It doesn't pop out. Because I'm having issues with my plastic multi-placers popping out of my pens. And I don't know why they're doing that. Like, the wax I'm using is too sticky for the multi-placer to stay in the pen. I don't know. I don't know what the deal is, but that is what I'm using today. So what is there to talk about? It's been a week. I'm trying to do these weekly. Um, they just take a lot out of me, so it's hard to think of things to talk about. Um, but I wanted to do one because, I don't know, I just want to start creating more content for this channel. Um, and I have a lot of ideas on future videos I want to do. I purchased a crap ton of wax because I want to do a wax comparison video. And I'm done testing everything. But now I just want to write all my thoughts down on all the waxes I have. And that's going to be time consuming. So I'm probably going to do that at some point tonight where insomnia takes hold of me. And um, I'll write all that out to film at some point this week. Um, I'm also going to continue my diamond painting for dummies tutorials. Um, they didn't get a lot of love. The first video didn't get a lot of love because I feel like a lot of people know what diamond painting is now. Um, and I'm trying to think of ideas that I could do for those videos. So if you have any um, anything you want to know about diamond painting that might confuse you or that you don't know about or you want to know more about, please let me know in the comments, um, because I would love to do a video on it to maybe help people with certain, certain things when it comes to diamond painting. Um, and then I have some special things planned for Halloween time. I, I don't know. I consider it special because 
I'm, I'm changing the format of the whipping chats. Um, and it's going to be a lot of fun. I actually have to do a little bit more research on, on some stuff, but starting, starting at the end of September, every Sunday, I'm going to be doing whipping chats on the channel in a different way. And I don't want to give too much away. I want to save an announcement more towards, um, the end of September. Uh, but yeah, I got a lot of ideas. It's hard to think of good content because uh, I'm currently on a no-buy. Unboxings are the most viewed on my channel, but I can't afford to do unboxings as much as I want to. Oh my goodness. <laughs> but I, I just cannot afford to do unboxings um, every week. Um, if anything, because it's very difficult for me not to buy a diamond painting, I've limited my purchases to probably about one or two paintings a month. Um, that's my limit. Uh, one to two paintings a month. Um, and then eventually, hopefully when I get through some of this stash, <laughs> I'll, I'll break my no-buy more often. <laughs> um, but yeah, so let's talk about life. Life is boring. Everything's boring. Probably, probably why these whipping chats, my whipping chats, don't do so well is because I don't have a very interesting life. Um, I did have things I wanted to talk about though, and I can't remember. I cannot remember for the life of me what they were. Oh, so I wanted. I actually tried to film a whipping chat this morning. Um, I wanted to talk about my mental health struggles and open up a little bit more to you all. Um, so you can learn a bit more about me, but I don't know, I felt, I had a lot of trouble deciding what was appropriate to talk about, what wasn't appropriate to talk about, what was too personal, I don't know, I know it's my channel, and I know I shouldn't fear judgment, and it's not that I fear judgment, I just don't want to tell other people's stories, because my story, unfortunately, involves other people, um, and I, and I don't, there's a way I can do it without um, giving away too much, but I don't know, I don't know if I'm ready to, sh to share all that yet with you, um, but we just hit 300 subscribers on the channel, that is unbelievable, I, I, I didn't think I'd get 10 subscribers, let alone 300, um, I'm so appreciative of all of you here, I appreciate all of you that leave comments, I love talking to you guys, it, it's, this has been so much fun, um, and I debated for a long time whether or not I wanted to start a YouTube channel because, again, it takes so much energy for me to sit and film one of these videos that I just, I feel like I lack. <laughs> but I've been finding motivation because I want to post videos, I want to post content, um, and this really was an endeavor that I started in the beginning of the year that has just exceeded what I thought it would be. Um, I, I started out with an Instagram. I, I just have 300 subscribers, but still, it's a, it's a milestone. It's another, it's another milestone in my YouTube life. Um, but I started a diamond painting Instagram literally January 1st of this year. I, for some reason, I had this feeling. I was like, you know what? I'm going to start a diamond painting Instagram specifically for this hobby that's gotten me through the pandemic, that's gotten me through these terrible um, negative thoughts that I've been experiencing, the anxiety that's been, you know, wreaking havoc on me since the pandemic, because I pretty much had my anxiety under control before the pandemic started. Um, well, maybe not. I don't know. I, it was definitely better. Uh, the year, the summer before shit hit the fan, I actually took myself off my meds. Please do not do that. Please do not we like go off your meds without consulting your doctor. I was dumb and just, I did not want to be on medication anymore. I didn't feel like I needed to be on medication anymore. And instead of talking to someone about it, um, I just stopped altogether. I didn't wean myself off it. And I experienced some serious, serious negative side effects. Panic attacks, 
Um, but then I was having weird, I guess this is something I could talk about. I was having the weird tingling and, and pain, almost like I thought I was having a heart attack. Like, it was very odd. I, I, w I wouldn't have caffeine that day. I wouldn't have anything. I didn't, I wouldn't feel anxious, but my body would feel like something was wrong with it. Like I felt, I won't, I don't want to say I felt like I was dying, but I felt like something was wrong. Um, I was at work one day and on my drive home, I had this severe shooting pain down my left arm, my chest, and then down my left arm. And then I had this tingling sensation and I lost feeling in the left side of my face. And I didn't know if I was having a stroke. I didn't know what was going on. Um, but it, it, it really scared me. <laughs> it scared me a lot. And when I Googled, please don't Google, but <laughs> when I Googled, it's the Google WebMD listed Everything, all the symptoms I had. No, you can't go off WebMD for anything. <laughs> Please don't. Um, but I'll explain why. I I don't know. Um, but I thought I had like a mini stroke. I, I just, I could not get over the fact that this was not a normal panic attack. This was not a panic attack. I'm not anxious. But when I went to the doctor, all they would tell me is that they asked me, do you have a history of anxiety? And I'd be like, yeah. They're like, oh, you, you're you're anxious. You're having a panic attack. And I'm like... But I've had panic attacks before, and that's not, this is not what that feels like. Um, and I was experiencing some terrible, terrible headaches, um, which was probably a side effect from coming off the medication so quickly. Um, and I would have breakdowns, like anxiety breakdowns, but that was different than this other, this other thing I was experiencing. So I don't know. I don't know what happened to me. I have no idea. I went to the neurologist so they could check out what was going on with me. Um, they didn't find anything too serious, but they did find a considerable amount of plaque in my carotid artery. And I, and I asked them, oh, is that is that normal? And they're like, no, but, but you're okay. And I was like, oh, but you just said it's not normal. Like, normal people don't have this. I don't know. Whatever. Whatever. Um, and then they ended up putting me on, oh geez, what is it called? <sighs> Beta blockers, um, to slow down my heart rate, uh, which is, it's really for anxiety. It's an anxiety beta blocker, um, for performance anxiety, and it helped. It helped with my headaches, um, but it didn't explain the weird tingling, um, and the pain that was shooting down my arm, that was never explained to me. Um, I went to the hospital because I was freaking out about it. Um, and the anxiety about it probably didn't help how I was feeling. But I had no idea what was going on. Because before it would even start, I'd feel fine. I'd feel absolutely, totally fine, not anxious. I'd be just driving home from work. Literally, that's when I felt the worst. And then I started... I was in a show and it got bad again and I started feeling tingly and I couldn't stand. And I, I'm telling you, I didn't, I was not having a panic attack. I know what my panic attacks feel like. It was, it was just strange. I don't know. But anyway, if it was a case of me coming off my medication too quickly, regardless, if it was just withdrawals, regardless, if I did experience something medical, um, please do not come off your meds <laughs> by yourself all at once because it can be dangerous and lead to some really nasty side effects. Um, cause I definitely experienced some withdrawals from being off the medication. Um, but I was medicated, I was medicated for a very, very long time for, um, okay. Well, I start, I started with Prozac, I believe, because I was first diagnosed with major depressive disorder um, when I was 15 years old, and then, um, I, uh, was diagnosed with manic depressive, which is what I actually was, 
um, when I was 18 and they put me on lithium and that was the only thing that worked for me. And it's funny because the psychiatrist was like, <laughs> when I first was put on medication, the psychiatrist that I had said to, said to my parents, said to me, listen, we could put her on lithium because it's a mood stabilizer and she's got weird mood swings that we can't explain. She's got these manic episodes that we can't explain. Um, but she's too young. She's too young to diagnose with bipolar disorder. She's too young for us to put on lithium because lithium, if you don't know what lithium is, it is, it is a mood stabilizer, but it is extreme. It's not, it's, it's a dangerous medication to go on. It has to be given in really small doses because it can boost your, I forget what, it's been so long since I've been on it. I don't even remember, but I had to get blood work done every six months so they could check my thyroid levels because um the lithium messes up your thyroid and it did i ended up being diagnosed with hyper hypo hypothyroidism not hyper i believe it was hypothyroidism um not long after i was put on the lithium and that's because the lithium is what caused it as soon as i came off that medication by myself again do not do that um I had no more problems with my thyroid. No more hypothyroidism. I went back for blood work um, before the world shut down and my my hormone levels in my thyroid were completely normal. So that's how you know I wasn't I wasn't actually I didn't actually just develop hypothyroidism randomly. It was from the medication and as soon as I stopped taking it, my body reverted to normal. And let me tell you. After I came off that medication, after all of that terrible um, withdrawal symptoms I experienced, I feel so much better not being on medication. Um, but I also don't need it. And it's taken me a really, really long time to get to that point. Um, I mostly just struggle with anxiety. Um, I have the very it's rare now but I do still suffer from some panic attacks from time to time um but it's got to be something extremely triggering for that to happen and that doesn't that doesn't happen as often anymore um what am I looking for I'm looking for <laughs> 413 and I'm trying to talk at the same time because I'm out of color that I need do I have to open a new bag I don't know I might have to I might have to open a new bag um but yes, I was 18 when they finally put me on the only medication that helped me. I was on that for four years, and then I decided to take myself off it. Um, and my mania, I guess this is a good way to talk about my mental health. I am just all over the place. I can't find anything I need. Um, my mania came in forms of excessive spending. Um, my highs would be just, I would blow all the money I made and then the money I didn't have. So when I was 20, I got my first credit card and I maxed it out probably in a month. Um, it was, it was really bad. I put myself in really extreme debt, um, that I thankfully got out of, uh, and actually <laughs> unemployment really helped a lot in me paying back the debt that I owed my credit card companies. It, it really was like a blessing in disguise in a strange way. Because now I'm no longer in debt. I'm so much better with my money. I have a, a decent amount of money saved. So it, it was it was good. But that was where my mania, my mania stem, stemmed from. Was just buying things that I didn't need. I used to be really into makeup. And I, I, I probably have thousands of dollars worth of makeup, um, that I, that I don't, and I don't even wear makeup anymore. All this makeup I have is just sitting, getting moldy and gross, and it's just thousands of dollars down the drain now. Um, so, oh, hold on one second. 
I think my boyfriend just knows when I'm filming a video because every time in the middle of filming something, he calls me. And it's usually to ask me a question that could have just been texted. Texted. Oh my gosh. I need to slow down when I'm speaking. Um, does anyone else's significant other do that? Where they'll call you for pretty much no reason to ask you a really dumb question not a dumb question i shouldn't say that but a question that could be asked over text and they just and then it's just dead air dead air we're not talking about anything i'm sitting here trying to film a video he's just on the phone and i'm like okay i'm, I'm gonna go now he's like oh i just wanted to be on the phone i'm like Bubba, i got i got i got stuff to do i got shit to do and this is a question you could have just texted me and now you just want to sit on the phone with me. I just, I literally was just over there. I love him to death. I love him to death. To de Oh my God. Make me stop. Make me speak like a normal human, please. To death. <laughs> I love him to death, but I, he likes to call for no reason. And it was endearing at first. It was. But anyway, he, he called me because... He wanted to let me know about his, again, could have been texted to me, that he didn't end up buying signs for the garage sale that he's having um, over the weekend. And I don't think I mentioned, me guys, oh my gosh, words are so difficult for me. I don't know why words are so hard for me, but I can't speak ever. Um, <laughs> my, I don't think I ever mentioned this, but my boyfriend is really big into buying and reselling things. So he'll go to garage sales every weekend. I kid you not, every weekend, um, spend pretty much the entire day going around where we live to different yard sales and just buying items that he could potentially make a profit off of. And let me tell you, he's not doing too bad. He's not doing too bad. Um, if you know who Gary V is, you might not. He's big on TikTok, but he's a big, like, um, flipper. He goes to garage sales and, and makes a lot of money off of the things that he finds there. Um, he's inspired by, by him, um, and he, that's what he wants to do. My boyfriend's really big into just selling things in general. He, he, he's going to school for psychology, but he's more interested in sales and flipping items. Which is fine. I mean, I feel like he's better at that anyway. Ah, that's too harsh. That's too harsh. Forget I said that. He wanted to do psychology, but this is something that he's more passionate about. That's what I mean. I don't mean that it's something he's better at. That was an ill-worded statement on my part. It's something that he really likes to do more than he likes to... Um, more than he likes psychology. And that's not a big deal. Professions change all the time. I went to school to be an actor and then changed my my major to English, but I can't speak. So how is that? Like, how am I an English major that can't speak? I can write really damn well, <laughs> but speaking is a whole different ball game. Why is that? Why can I write so well, but I can't speak for shit? <laughs> So yes, my boyfriend's really big into flipping items. He's doing pretty well. He spends a lot of time on it. It's like his hobby. He's got his flipping. I've got my diamond painting. Um, but his makes him money. <laughs> so <laughs> mine, mine, I just spend money. I spend money and I make content and because I like it. But I don't get anything for it and I don't expect to. Um, but his hobby makes him money and I'm really happy for it. <laughs> Um, but that's what he's doing. And so he's having this yard sale, this garage sale, because he's trying to get rid of the junk that he kind of impulse bought and can't sell. He's still new to the whole thing. And so he gets kind of roped into buying shit because people at these yard sales were like, take that, take that, I'll bundle all that for one dollar. And he's like, oh, okay. Um, but that shit, it doesn't, he knows it doesn't sell. And then he feels bad that he, that he was roped into buying that stuff so he's doing a yard sale to get rid of all that unwanted stuff um this weekend um and yeah and that's what he's doing um what i do 
I, I went to a garage, to a few garage sales with him uh, this past weekend. And I don't know, I got bored so fast. I just, it was interesting. We found some really cool typewriters. They were so, so cool. One of them actually belonged to an author, a local author. So I ended up, we were, <laughs> we were going to resell it and he was going to give me some of the profit from it. But I was like, no, I want to keep it. I want to keep it. I want to keep it for my future writing room, my future office, and just display it. Because it's a piece of history. It's so cool. It's got like a... Oh, I got an itch. It's got like a chalk inscription on it from the author from when he was in college. It's, it's, it's so cool. And I love it a lot. So I want to hold on to it. Um, but other than that, it was kind of not a good day for yard sales. Um, we didn't see anything interesting. But then again, I don't really know what I'm looking for. I just see things that look cool and unique and he'll either tell me, yeah, that's not worth something or, ooh, that might be worth something. Um, but I, I don't know. It, it got boring real fast. Some of the, <laughs> some of the yard sales I didn't even, I didn't even get out of the car for. Um, I don't know. But it was nice just to get out of the house and do something and see what people were trying to get rid of. Um, there was a lot of baby clothes, a lot of baby stuff. Um, which was kind of interesting. I don't know why that was so interesting to me, but a lot of these yard sales had all these kid stuff, baby stuff. Um, there were some, like, sports memorabilia that could have, might have been worth something, but we couldn't find it. We really couldn't find anything on it. Um, but yeah, it was, it, it was cool. It was, it was interesting to see what he does. He usually goes out on weekends with his friend who actually got him into the flipping stuff. Um, but he wasn't around this weekend because, uh, he's in summer school, so he had a lot of homework to do. And so he invited me and I said, sure, I'll go out and see what's up. I don't know. It was hot. I was bored. <laughs> and I said to him, I wanted to go to, I wanted to go to the beach. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I'd rather be at the beach right now, too. Because we couldn't find anything. And I said, why don't we go? <laughs> I said, we still have time. But we didn't. We didn't go. We didn't go. But we did get Dairy Queen afterwards. Um, and that was delicious. Speaking of Dairy Queen and food, I kind of, like, totally veered away from the mental health stuff. But I feel like, I don't know. I, I Again, I don't want to dive too deep into the mental health stuff. But <laughs> I... <laughs> I've been on Weight Watchers. I think I mentioned I've been on Weight Watchers. Um, for, this is the fourth week now I'm on Weight Watchers, so it's been a month. I've lost almost 10 pounds, which is amazing. I, I, I can't believe it. But I don't feel good about it. Like, I, I'm glad that I look good. I, I feel happy that I look better, that I look thinner. But I'm not happy as to how I have to go about it. Um, it's, it's just, I feel like I'm starving myself and I don't have the food to not starve myself. Like I don't have the proper snacks. Like, I don't know. I never feel satisfied after a meal. I never feel like I'm full. I, I feel hungry all the time. I'm constantly thinking about food. It's been, this is, this is the month mark after this week. It'll have been a month since I started. And I am still thinking about food constantly. I, I, I don't, I, it's so difficult to do this. And I was looking up stuff. I'm like, is dieting healthy? Should I diet? What should I do? And a lot of these websites don't recommend dieting. A lot of like psychological, like psychological websites, psychiatrists, um, therapists really do think dieting is damaging to people. Like, I'm pretty much on a keto diet. Um, it's not specifically a keto diet, but it's a keto diet because it reprimands you heavily if you want to eat carbs. I haven't had pasta or, like, anything seriously carby in a month. And that's the longest time I've ever gone without having pasta because I love carbs. Carbs are everything. And it really, really reprimands you for wanting to eat carbs. So I basically am on a keto diet. And it's just, it really brings down my mood. 
it brings down I I my energy levels are really low because I'm not getting the the energy I need because from I'm not eating carbs so I don't have energy because I'm not eating any carbs um I don't know and I just I've just I've cried a lot over this diet um I can't go out with my friends often or when they want to go out like they want to go out during the week this week they want to go to this fondue restaurant that I would I really want to go to but I don't have the points for it I'd have to eat vegetable a vegetable fondue in order to and then just point whatever cheese I have with it and that's not fun that's not what I want to do. That's not what I want to do when I go out with my friends and eat. Like, I just, you know what I mean? You're going to a fondue place. You want to eat yummy foods with your fondue, not vegetables. That's just me. And I know it's supposed to help you with, um, with your choices. And I am making better choices, but I'm just not eating as much. I'm, I'm eating really, really below what I, what I burn just from sitting um, and that's why I'm losing so much weight so quickly, because I'm not, I'm, I'm really, really severely under eating, I feel like. Um, and it's not good, and, and, but that's what these apps, that's what these diets promote. And all these, all these professionals, or I don't know, professionals, whatever, that's on the internet, the, all these people are saying... Dieting is not good for you. If you have kids, you shouldn't be on a diet because then they're not getting what they need to grow because kids need to eat like, I don't want to say eat crap, but they got to eat, you know, a balanced diet. Like they need to eat. They can't eat nothing, you know, to so they can grow properly. So all these parents trying to be on diets, because I remember when my parents were on Weight Watchers when I was in high school and they make all these dinners that I wouldn't like I'd be like what the hell I don't want to be on a diet with you like you know it just it kind of sucks um so I don't know I have to be on it for three months because um my my mom is kind enough because she wanted me to try it it, it was technically a birthday present to me she was kind enough to pay for three months worth of uh, Weight Watchers, but I think after the three months is over, I'm I'm going to stop it. I just don't feel, I, I feel, I don't have as much energy. I want to go to bed at eight o'clock at night or, or like, it's terrible. Like, I don't know. If any of you have done Weight Watchers or are on Weight Watchers, how do you keep, how do you keep within your daily point budget and not feel like you want to eat still all the time and you don't have the points to do it. It's just terrible. I, I like, I had such a big salad today too. I had a salad. I had a chef salad. Um, it had rolled up roast beef, turkey, and cheese. It was less than two ounces of everything. They were so thinly sliced, but it was a huge bowl of salad with peppers and, um, cucumbers and onions and tomatoes all free on Weight Watchers and it was a lot and it didn't fill me up I did not feel satisfied I it was so it's so disappointing because I want to eat and there's nothing to eat I don't know I don't know it's very it's very hard it's sad I and I'm young and all my friends want to do things and I feel like my friends aren't going to want to hang out with us anymore because we're constantly like hey I can't do that Emily can't do that she's on a diet she can't eat that what if we go here instead like we're constantly shifting plans from where our friends want to take us and I feel terrible for it and it's my fault because I'm the one on the diet no one else's it's just because I don't like exercising either but I have to be so rigid with what I what I'm eating and I wasn't happy with the weight I was at. I wasn't at all. Um, I, I was at the heaviest I've ever been. Um, but I'm not active. I don't do anything. So it's a lot easier for me to gain the weight. I'm also on birth control. I don't know, y'all. I don't know. Dieting, dieting is not easy. It's not fun. Diets fail most of the time because people, you can't. It's just, 
not realistic. And when you're not used to eating a certain way, when you have to change, literally my entire lifestyle, I had to change to lose this weight. And it's really difficult, especially when I'm used to eating a certain way for so long. And the thing is, I'm, I lost 30 pounds before the world shut down by eating Chipotle for dinner um, and Starbucks in the morning. That's it. I'd have Starbucks in the morning. Maybe I would get a snack from the vending machine at school. And then I would get Chipotle and that would be it. That'd be all I had. I didn't snack in the middle of the night. I didn't, and but now I'm snacking all the time in the middle of the night. And I think that's the biggest problem is the snacking um, in the middle of the night. So yeah, it just, it's hard. It's hard and it makes me sad. And I just feel low energy all the time. I actually feel like I might be getting a cold. Um, like my nose is really stuffy. I don't know whether or not it's allergies, but I wouldn't be surprised if I was becoming run down because I'm I'm not I'm not getting what my body needs to uh, live. Um, so yeah, I mean, it is what it is. I gotta tough it out for two more months, and I don't know. We'll see how I feel. We'll see how I feel. I have cheat days. Oh, don't get me wrong. I have cheat days. There are some days where I don't point at all and I eat whatever I want. And then the, the kicker is now I don't eat as much of the gross, disgusting food because my stomach has shrunk so much from the dieting. So it's kind of a good thing. It is kind of a good thing. I'm not eating as much of the crap, but I don't know. I don't know. What do you guys think of diets? Yay or nay on diets. I say nay. Nay, 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 nay. YOLO. You only live once. Eat what you want. Be happy. Because here's the thing. When I lost all that weight, um, when I started school, I was not happy. Um, I wasn't depressed, but I also was not happy with myself. So I was eating less. Now that I'm happy, now that I'm feeling good about myself, I'm in a wonderful relationship, uh, I gained a lot of weight because I was eating. When I'm in a depressive um, state, I don't eat. Um, when I'm anxious, severely anxious, I don't eat. Um, I can't eat. I, I physically feel ill putting food in my mouth. It's not that I don't want to, it's that I can't. Um, and because I'm, I'm in a good mood and I'm happy, you know, it's much more difficult not to want to eat not not eating makes me miserable like I, it's terrible oh, but anyway i think i've rambled on long enough um i think we might end it here today uh i, I yeah yeah we'll end it here today um i hope you all enjoyed i hope you got something out of these ramblings that i do i don't know um but if you did, that makes me happy. Um, and if you enjoyed today's video, please consider giving it a big thumbs up. Um, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Join, join our little growing family. Um, I would love to do more of these whipping chats. I just feel like they're not, I mean, I don't know. I, I feel like not a lot of people watch them. <laughs> My kid up and chat video, I don't even know how this happened. It's the, it was the same style of video as any other whip and chat I do on my channel. And it's got like... It's got so many people watching, but my other ones get nothing, but I don't know. I don't know. It kind of feels like me exhausting myself, talking for so long, and there's no point to it because no one watches it. But I am very grateful for those that do watch, so thank you. Thank you for watching the 80 of you who come to watch these these little ramblings that I have it is much appreciated. Any, like, I'm not here for the views. I'm not. I'm not here for the views. I'm not here for subscribers or anything like that. I'm here because I love doing this. I love diamond painting. I'm putting myself out there. I'm taking myself out of my comfort zone. And I am enjoying every minute of it, even though it exhausts me to no end <laughs> sometimes. But anyway, please subscribe if you enjoyed today's whip and chat. There will be plenty more. I'm getting used to doing one of these every week. 
Um, so hopefully they'll continue to be every week. We shall see. Um, and expect some more videos coming soon. Expect a small shop haul too. I totally forgot to mention that. I've got a rainbow pride box coming finally. It was finally shipped today from Paint, Paint with Diamonds, I think it's called. Thank goodness, because I thought I was never going to get that package. And then I've got some stuff from Excuse Me Designs coming uh, for Halloween. So I'm very excited. And so be on the lookout for those videos. Be on the lookout for more tutorials. And uh, keep your eye on the channel for when spooky season comes. Because eee, I'm so excited. I got to actually start getting my button gear for research on that. But you don't know what I'm talking about. But you won't know until later in the year. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna get out of here. I'm gonna get water. My throat is parched from just nonstop talking and I didn't bring water up here. Um, I hope you all have a wonderful day, afternoon, morning, night, whenever it is you are watching this. And I hope you continue to spread positivity and creativity creativity in your everyday lives. Who still can't talk. And I'll see you all in my next video. Bye!